Good morning, eager students. This is your eager lecturer, Jerry, here. Um, I think this is lecture seven. And um, today I want to do th two things. The first thing I want to finish off what we started last time in lecture six about inverses, and we'll talk about a special inverse. It's This is not important. It may be a little bit even confusing, but it's sometimes you will see what we're going to be doing next. So I just want you to be aware of it and not be afraid. That's the whole point of the series of lectures, I suppose, is that there's nothing difficult about this. So don't be afraid of this. Um, the second thing we're going to be talking about, though, is the, probably the most important, the central part of matrices and solution of simultaneous equations. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about, though, is a special um, matrix, a special type of matrix, a special class of matrices. So um, the first one is, uh, is a matrix is what's called orthogonal, orthogonal. If a matrix, can I call it A, is orthogonal if A, A transpose is equal to A transpose A is equal to I. Now, um, again, you may be wondering what the hell, oh, and A must be a square matrix. As always, guys, always must be square. So um, a matrix, square matrix A is orthogonal if A, A transpose is equal to A transpose A is equal to I. I is the identity matrix. Remember we talked about this? It's one, zero, zero, one, or it could be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, et cetera. Depending on what the dimension of the square matrix A is, I, the, the form of I changes. Okay, so if a matrix A is orthogonal, that's the definition. And you want to call that, again, recall, that the inverse of A which we're calling A with a minus one in the top right corner has this definition A, A inverse is equal to A inverse A is equal to I so if A matrix is orthogonal because if you look at this thing here folks you'll see here look that if you, if you replace a transpose by a inverse and a transpose a inverse you get the same relationship so if a matrix is orthogonal a inverse is equal to a transpose and again, now, is this crucial to your engineering education? Will you be asked you know, in the, on the factory floor um, on a Monday morning when you start working as an engineer, if, if, you, if anybody knows what an orthogonal matrix is? Probably not, almost certainly not, I hope not. Um, but uh, this is kind of, you will see this as you, as you go through, again, your engineering studies, this kind of a notion of orthogonal matrix. So don't be put out by it. And, and remember we talked about how difficult it is to find inverses of, of a matrix. And if a matrix is orthogonal, the, the calculation is very, very easy because all you have to do then to get the inverse is just get the transpose of the matrix A. So that's where it's really, really easy. Now, let me just show you um, what kind of question you're going to be asked. Definition of an orthogonal transpose is, or, or to, orthogonal matrix is. This is the definition here. And sometimes I could actually maybe use um, this, this idea here that the inverse is equal to the transpose if the matrix is orthogonal to ask you a stupid question. Now, there, in, in the exercises on 8.6, let me show you a typical question. This is 8.6 and it's question seven. So, so what the question is, given that, this matrix here, M is cos omega t minus sine omega, minus sine omega t, zero, sine omega t, cos omega t, zero, and zero, zero, one is orthogonal. Find its inverse. No, so this is a, this looks difficult and you think, oh my god i'm so afraid again don't be afraid hear my voice when you're looking at this stuff it's very very easy if matrix is orthogonal in m inverse 
will be just the transpose. So here is the solution. It's very, very easy. M inverse is the, is the, is the, um, is the, uh, the transpose of this. So the first row becomes the first column. So you get cos omega t minus sine omega t zero. The second row becomes the second column. So you get sine omega t cos omega t zero. And the third row becomes the third column. And that's what you get. And you can check that. You can check that then that, um, that M M inverse is equal to I, but I'm not going to do it because it's too easy. And you need something to do when you're in your lockdown situation, right? So that's a that's, that's 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 so don't be afraid, don't be put off by by this notion of orthogonality. Now I do appreciate that this is just another stupid definition, um, but you have to remember, on top of all the other definitions and all the other all the other uh, terminology that we're forcing you to learn. But as I say, guys, um, engineering mathematics is moving towards this way. It's moving towards the study of matrices. Everything is becoming linear algebra. And uh, so you need to kind of get this into your brains, I suppose, now, because you've got three more years ahead of you, hopefully. So, um, or five or four more years ahead of you. So in, in some cases, so let's, 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 let's get this into your heads. You will see this, you know, orthogonality. What, what does it mean? All it means, folks, is this. That's all it means. If the matrix... If, the trans if you multiply a matrix by its transpose and you get I, the matrix is called orthogonal. And don't be, again be, be intimidated by this stupid terminology. When I was your age, I was intimidated by this because I'm easily intimidated. Um, like, uh, what, you know, I, I just, I, 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 I always expected, I always hoped that these, this terminology would mean more than it does, you know? So oh, what's an orthogonal matrix? That's all it is. It's just a stupid definition. There's nothing intrinsically obvious about what an orthogonal matrix is. So don't be, as I say, intimidated by this. Okay, so that's the first part. So this is that it's kind of a special class of matrices whose mate is inverse is its transpose. That's basically what an orthogonal matrix is. All right. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first part, uh, and it's just a cont continuation of what we did on on last week in lecture six. So now what I want to talk about is the meat of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so this is called a sim um, solutions of simultaneous equations, and this is oh, this is this is why matrices were invented. Okay, so let's let's let's, let's have a look. So here, this is um, simultaneous equations. And now I'm going to use the example that's in the book just to, to start us off. And we just we'll do this. It doesn't matter what the example is. Um, 2x plus 4y is equal to 14, and x minus 3y is equal to minus 8. So this is the example. This is on page 269 of the book. Okay. Now... You've seen this before. I think, do you do this in, for junior cert? I'm not sure anymore what, what, what people do. I'm sure that, well, when I was, when I, I, I did this in, um, in national school, I'm sure, because we were so more advanced. All right. Um, but I can't remember what the, what, when we did this or when you did this. But here, here's, the, here's the, 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 um, the game. The game here is you want to find value, a value for x and a value for y. So, so when you substitute, replace x by that value and y by that value, you get equality. You get a number, the same number equal to the same number in the first line, and the same number is equal to the same number. So the game here, your mission, find x and y. That's it. Now, next year, when we start, we start talking about um, differential equations, and you've even talked about differential equations with Connor, um, it's very important before you begin a problem to know what you're what, what, what you're trying to trying to do, right? That's the basic. It's obvious if you don't know what you're trying to do, then there's no point in beginning. So this is a very simple idea. So this is you want to find x and y, and I'm going to do this the way um, uh, I was taught, maybe. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. Okay, so let me just and like this is kind of recap or. Um, summary of what you already know. Now, the first thing you do notice here, folks, that this is kind of a stupid question, really. Um, if you think about it, if you look at the, the, the in, this is the, the, the example that's done in the book. But if you look at the first equation here, you've got two x plus four y is equal to twelve, oh, 14. Um, the first thing you can do here is you can cancel. There's a, there's a two common in each of these things. So really, you know, you shouldn't be looking at this system of equations, which is fine. Let's make it things simpler. It's x plus two y 
is equal to 7, and x minus 3y is equal to minus 8. All right? Now, there are two ways to do this. There's a kind of a sophisticated way, and there's the kind of way that I was taught in school, which is kind of all right as well. Um, the first way, the first thing I was done in school, uh, um, let me call this school one. I can't spell school. <laughs> all right. Is you multiply one of the equations by a number such that when you add the two equations, you, you get cancellation. Now, I'm not sure if, if that's the way you were taught, but this is what. So if you look at these two, these, these two, these two equations here, um, I notice that if I multiply the top line or the bottom one here by um, minus one, I'm going to get cancellations of the x's when I add. So I leave the first one alone, x plus 2y is equal to 7. I'll leave that alone. If I multiply the second one, though, by minus 1, I get minus x plus 3y is equal to 8. Be careful on the right-hand side here, folks, because you must multiply the, the right-hand side as well by minus 1. Now, when I add these two equations, we talked about this last day, that there is nothing. Folks, you're going to go through life and think, oh, this life is, 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 not, is great, or life sucks, whatever way you, you stand on the position of life, but there is nothing sweeter than cancellation. This is, this, is, this is as good as it gets in any sphere of human activity. Look, this is, this is the best. So here you see, look, this x and minus x. Oh, you get cancellation. That's beautiful. You get 2y plus 3y, which is 5y is equal to 15. So then y is equal to 3. And then you go back to any of, the, any of these equations here, and you replace y by 3. So let's look at the first one. So you get x plus 2 by 3 is equal to 7. And then when you replace that 6, and when you bring 6 over the side, side, you get x is equal to 7 minus 6, and you get 1. Boom, boom. So that's the way you do it. So you get x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. And the way you do this, now, guys, now maybe you didn't do this in school, um, but this is the way I was taught how to do these things. You multiply one of the equations by a number so that when you, you get cancellation. Now, that's sometimes it doesn't always work, and there's a little bit more sophisticated way to do this. And... Um, Maybe uh, if you went to a very good school, um, you might have done this. You can tell me now uh, when, I, when I see you again uh, after the, the lockdown. But um, here's, here's school too, okay? So school two is, um, let me write down the two equations first. X plus 2y is equal to 7. And x minus 3y is equal to minus 8. Now this is a little bit more sophisticated, right? So um, you get the same answer. Uh, and maybe the first way, school one way, is actually the quickest way. It's probably the most efficient way uh, to do this, actually, to be fair to, to the guys who taught me. And uh, um, actually, the guy who taught me, actually, this stuff, he, he was a great teacher. He used a hurley. And if you didn't know stuff, you got beaten. So you learned stuff quickly. All right. But he was a very good teacher, actually. And this is, you know, you got very good at doing, doing this. Um, but here's a little bit more sophisticated way. When I was when I went to college, I realized that there's, or I was taught there's a little bit more sophisticated way to do things. And this is a little bit more sophisticated way and probably a better way to do it. So what you do is you solve, you use one of the equations to solve for either x or y, and you substitute them into the second equation. So if you look at the first equation here, it just, just pick it, the first equation, you can write, um, so this, let me call this 1, and then you call this 2. So from 1, 1 gives you that x is equal to 7 minus 2y. Okay, so you, 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 you add minus 2y to both sides, and you get cancellation of the y's in this, and you get minus 2y here. Now, um, again, I'm not going to go into this because if, 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 if we were face-to-face, -face, I would have embarrassed you, some of you. But the way I was taught how to solve, for instance, the first equation was you bring the 2y over to the right-hand side, and it becomes a minus, which is not what you do at all. Uh, what you do is you subtract 2y from both sides. And when you subtract 2y from the left-hand side, you get just x. And when you subtract 2y from the right-hand side, you get 7 minus 2y. But that's just kind of arson around, basically. Um, so from the first equation, you can solve for x in terms of y easily. And then you go to equation 2 now, and you replace x by what you get from the first equation. So I got 7 minus 2y minus 3y is equal to minus 8. And so therefore, uh, 7 minus 5y is equal to minus 8. Now, if I bring the 7 over to the other side, it becomes minus 7. Bad school. If I, I subtract 7 from both sides, I get 
minus 5y is equal to minus 8 minus 7, which is minus 15, and so therefore y is equal to 3. And then I go back up to equation 1 from the, this equation here, and I replace y by 3, and so therefore x is 7 minus 2 by 3, which is 1. All right. So I'm getting the same result. I'm getting x equal to 1, y equal to 3. Boom, boom, both ways. And uh, whatever turns you on, I don't care what way you do this, as long as you get the, the right answer. But here's the problem. And, and the problem is, 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 is that this is kind of hard to tell a computer actually how to do this. No, it's not impossible. But certainly the first way, you know, telling a computer, oh, multiply the first one of the equations so that you get cancellation. What? How do you program that up? The second one is a little bit easier to program up, actually. Um, you solve for the first equation, and you know you can actually do that and substitute it. But it's 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 not um, um, very efficient, I suppose. It's not very elegant, really. So here's the new way we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be doing uh, two more ways because simultaneous equations, guys. This idea of solving for x and y is the basis of all engineering computation. All the software that people use is based on this. Again, that's the coffee machine. We do nothing else but drink coffee now. That's what we do. Yeah? We used to talk to people, now we just drink coffee and get, get fat and biscuits. All right, coffee machine is, yeah, stop. All right, it's done. Where was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of uh, engineering software is based on the solution of simultaneous equations. So what you want, people have been looking at this and developing more and more efficient ways of doing it and better and better ways of doing it. So the next way I'm going to talk to you, the, 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 the next method of solution simultaneous I'm going to talk to you about is, is, is actually very kind of, it's, it's taking um, these equations and looking at them in a more abstract way, if I could. All right. So let me just show you, this is, this is uh, and this is called using linear algebra to solve simultaneous equations or using matrices to solve simultaneous equations. Okay. So here's it. So linear algebra is the fancy word really for matrices. So let's so let's look at the two equations again. So I've got x plus two y is equal to seven, and I've got x minus three y is equal to minus eight. Now, folks. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at this uh, system of equations in a kind of more abstract mathematical setting, okay, if we could. Now, if you look on, let's look at the right-hand side. You, you've got a 7 and minus 8. So it seems to me, actually, and anyway, it's maybe not to you, but to, to, to me, um, If you look at the, just the, for, for the right-hand side, you've got a 7 and you've got minus 8, right? So if you just look at the two numbers, right? So forget what the equals, just the right-hand side, 7 and minus 8. So it makes sense to, you know, we've got, a, a, essentially then, if you look on the right-hand side, you essentially have, you've got a, a vector. You've got a column vector here on the right-hand side. Hopefully that, that, makes, that makes sense. All right, so you just look at the right-hand side and you get a column vector. It, you can naturally generate a column vector from simultaneous equations just by looking at the right-hand side. Now, also, if you look at the numbers multiplying the x and y on the left-hand side, there is a natural kind of collect way of collecting them. So there's a natural collection for what are called the coefficients of x and y. Like again, natural collection for coefficients of x and y. So if you look at, on the left-hand side now, and the numbers multiplying the x and y, they're called the coefficients of x and y. There's a natural collection, a natural way of writing down those numbers, isn't I hope. So you see 1 and 2 from the first one, and you get 1 and 1. Okay? So that's, what, so that, so that's a natural way to, to, to kind of abstract the study of these simultaneous equations. And again, because you, these, these, it's a rectangular collection of numbers, you can write this down. Okay. No. So far, so good. So there's a natural association of a column vector with the right uh, with the right hand side, and there's a natural association of a square matrix with the coefficients of x and y on the left hand side. Okay. So you've got a natural collection there. 
do not be intimidated by this one. Again, folks, when I did start first start doing linear algebra in college, I was always kind of put up with this. Like, why can't we just go back and do the things that we did in school? Because and we can't do it because we want to come up with a more efficient way for solving not only two equations in two unknowns, but a million equations in a million unknowns. And the way you do it in school isn't the best way to do it from a, 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 a computational point of view. This way is a little bit better. Okay, so, 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 so far so good. Now, the only thing that's missing actually is a, a collection, natural collection for X and Y. Would you agree? Because we've got a collection for the, well, the left, for the right hand side. We've got a collection for the, um, the, 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 the coefficients of X and Y. It's a square matrix, it's a two by two matrix. Now, it would seem natural collection for X and Y is just X, Y, right? Because you look at X and Y and you put a thing here and a thing here. Now, the problem though, folks, is this. We want to um, use matrix multiplication. Now, this is a two by two matrix here. Now, if you look at the dimensions of this, it's got one row and two columns. And if we multiply um, this thing, the two by two matrix by one by two, you can't do it because look, this number here is not the same as this number here. So it turns out that the, natu the natural way of writing the unknowns is not as a row, but as a column. So it, it's not obvious, but this is what you should do actually. So the, the natural association, the natural, it's not natural at all. The natural one is as a row, but people have realized, well, it's actually better to write the unknowns, not as a row, which you might think is the better way to do it or the more natural way to do it, but as a column. So you write it as, instead of X and Y, this way, you write it as this way. Okay, so instead of this, not as a row, but you write it as a column. So what you can do then is you can write, rewrite that system of equations here as a matrix equation, okay? So what you can do is you can rewrite the, let me do this again, x plus two y is equal to seven, and x minus three y is equal to minus eight. You can write that as, so all this mess here is exactly the same as, you can write this as, let's write down the numbers multiplying the x and y, one and two. The numbers multiplying the x and y from the second one, which is one minus three. You write down the x and y as a column, not obvious, but this is what you do, and you write down the, the right-hand side and minus eight. Now, you will notice here, guys, that there's only one equals here. We start going from two equals to one to two equals. Uh, and now because if, then the reason, being is that we, we're going to know if we multiply the left hand side here, if you multiply this out, you get x minus two y. And the bottom side is x minus three y is equal to seven and minus eight. And you only need one equals here because two matrices are the same if the two entries, if the dimensions are the same and the entries are the same. So therefore, if this is equal to this, then we get x plus two y is equal to seven, and we get x minus three y is equal to minus eight. Okay, so, so far so good. Now, um, what can I ask you to do here? The first thing oh, I could ask you to do, and I have asked in the past, and probably will ask in the future, is, is just to take a system of simultaneous equations and to rewrite it in matrix form. So this is not an obvious thing to do. It's a little bit sophisticated, actually. Uh, because we're going away from the, you know, the, the, the school way of doing these things into a little bit more um, abstract way, methods of doing this, okay? So let me just show you. Let me just, just, just do an, an example. What, uh, what, what should we be asked to do? So. Now, I'm not going to ask you to find what X and Y is in this case if I actually ask you to write a matrix form. All I want you to do is rewrite this in the way we've just seen. That's it. You're using a one equals and a square matrix on the left hand side multiplied by a column equal to a column. That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to solve it. I'll show you in a second how you solve it. All I want you to do is like do is abstract this in, 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 in a certain sense. 
So the solution to this, writing the matrix form of this is, is very simple. You write down the numbers multiplying the x and y. One, two, five, seven. You write down the unknowns as a column. And you write down the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, as a column. That's it, folks. Now, we haven't solved for x and y here. All we've done is we, we've rewritten it in matrix form. So this is exactly the same as this. You could argue that this, actually, the, what we started with is simpler than this. And to a certain extent, you're right. It is a little bit simpler. But this has advantages of, for, for solution of simultaneous equations, as we show, I'll show you in a second. OK? And this is the way that uh, simultaneous equations are usually written in engineering and in mathematics and in physics. Now you can do this. You can you can you can um, generalize this to uh, three by th three equations and three unknowns. So if I ask you write in matrix form x minus two y plus three z is equal to zero, five x minus y and plus z is equal to minus 10, and x minus 2y plus 6z is equal to 7. Okay, so here now we've got three equations and three unknowns. Um, I don't know if you remember this from, from leaving circuit, that's a very difficult thing to do. You're almost guaranteed to make a mistake because you've got a lot of things going on there, too many variables, too many, you know, it's three. We can solve simultaneous equations, two equations and two unknowns, relatively straightforwardly. But it's difficult to actually do this. You know, uh, even the brightest people find this difficult. <laughs> All right, think of the brightest person that you know. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult to do this. But in this situation here, if I'm asking you to do this in the exam, write in matrix form these three simultaneous equations. All I'm asking you to do is this. Write down the numbers, multiplying the x, y's, and z's in a square matrix. So in this case, now we've got three by three matrix, folks, because we've got three unknowns. We've got three equations and three unknowns. So you get one, minus two, and three from the first equation. The second one then is five, minus one, and one. And you will notice, guys, here that in this in this square matrix, there's no x and y's and z's, it's just numbers. And here, guys, the last one then is one, minus one, and six. You write down the unknowns as a column. It's not obvious, but that's what you do. In this case, you've got three unknowns, so it's x, y, and z equals the right-hand side, which in this case is 0, minus 10, and so on. So if nothing else from um, this course, I want you to remember this, because that's, that's kind of not obvious thing to do, but it's what you do really if you want to get this thing done in terms of a, a this is one way to do it using um, computers. If you want to get a computer to do this for you, this is the way, one way that you might do it. It's actually not the most efficient way. We'll do another, we'll, if you hang around to the end of the week, we'll, I'll show you the, um, the really clever way of doing this. And it actually involves machine learning. Oh my God, you're doing everything in this course. All right. So, but again, folks, what I want to emphasize here is that we've rewritten it in matrix form here, but we haven't found X and Y and Z. We haven't done that yet. Okay. So before we, I do one example and show you how to do this in terms of X, Y, and Z, and then we'll actually stop, is uh, I want you to, I want to kind of generalize this. I want to write this in kind of a very general notation, this kind of idea of simultaneous equations. Because we've done it here, look. You'll see here, for two equations, two unknowns, you write it this way. Three equations, three unknowns, you write it this way. So here's what, what you can do. No. Every system of simultaneous equations, can I write it as sim equations? Can be written as a x is equal to b. Okay, so if you look back here, look, is the, the, uh, look where where a is a a is the, is the square matrix. It's the square of the numbers multiplying the x's, y's, and z's. X is the column of unknowns. And B is your column of right-hand sides. Okay. 
So we've done it. We've done it for two by two and three by three. But um, so in this case, if you look at this, the three by three matrix, this is your capital A matrix. This is your um, X matrix. And this is your B matrix. Now, do not be confused by this, folks. This, 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 this X bar. This X bar is actually a column of unknowns, which can include X and usually does actually, because X is the most popular uh, symbol for, for the unknowns. So this X bar means X, Y, and Z. X bar here means just X and Y. So it depends on the dimension of the simultaneous equation system. Okay. So, um, but this is the way you could, but this is, is, is a nice general way of writing it. Okay. AX is equal to B, where A is a square of numbers and A can be 10 million by 10 million, as it is typically these days. X is the, is the column of unknowns, you, and B is the right-hand sides. Okay, now, let me show you then, if you write simultaneously equations in this way, magic happens. Let me be your magician, all right? Let's now multiply both sides by A inverse, just for the laugh, okay? So here I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both sides by A inverse because I can do that because I'm going to do both sides. Okay. Now you will remember by def the definition of what A inverse is. A inverse by A gives you the identity matrix depending on how, what the size of A is. This is just A inverse B. Now we haven't done this folks, but we're gonna do it now. If you multiply an identity matrix by a column, you just get a column. That's just the way it works. So if you multiply an identity matrix by a column vector, you just get the column vector. So what you get in the next line then is you get X is equal to A inverse B. And that is so important. That is really what linear algebra is all about. Because now what we have is we have the unknowns on the left-hand side on their own equal to A inverse times B. And we know, or we can calculate what A inverse is, and we know what B is. So on the right-hand side now, theoretically at least, we, have, we know what's on the right-hand side. So therefore now we can find out what X is, where X is your column of unknowns. All right, so that's what you do. So to solve simultaneous equations, solving simultaneous equations is equivalent to finding inverses of matrices. Duh. So that's just what, well, that's not obvious, but that is true. That's what's going on. And when you were in school, happy in your, you know, when you're brilliant school and there was no hard stuff to do, lots of hugging and self-esteem building. Um, that wasn't my school, by the way. <laughs> that's what it's like now. But, uh, um, when you were doing your simultaneous equations, you remember the, the stuff that we did at the beginning of the, of the lecture, you know, the, the I can't find it, um, you know, the, the school one and school two, your happy days. I was happy in school. You know, this stuff, look, this stuff, school one, school two. Remember this? This is what we did at the beginning. All that kind of multiplying one number, one thing by another thing and adding and getting cancellation. What you were doing actually, unbeknownst to yourself, is that you were solving you were getting the inverses of matrices and multiplying them by column vectors. All right. So let's show you what's examinable. All right. So let's go back to our um, system of equations that we. we using matrices, solve x plus y is equal to seven, x plus two y is equal to seven, and x minus three y is equal to minus eight. So guys, this is the example in the book. This is on page 269 if you have the book. And I'm just going to go through this again. And I'm going to show you what, what, how you use matrices to solve simultaneous equations. Okay. So x plus 2y is equal to 7. x minus 3y is equal to minus 8. So the first thing you do, guys, is you write this in matrix form. 
right? So remember now, if you've got simultaneous equations, you're going to have a square matrix on the left-hand side multiplied by the column of unknowns equal to the column of the right-hand side. So let's, let's do this. So you get 1, 2, 1, minus 3, x, y is equal to 7, minus 8. Okay? Now, remember now, again, what we talked about just there. If we want to get the, the solution for x there, uh, for if, if x is your column of unknowns, the way you get x is you multiply the right-hand side by the inverse of the square matrix. So therefore, the solution here is therefore x and y is 1, 2, 1, minus 3, inverse by 7 minus 8. Now, guys, when I, again, I was not happy when I was first came across this stuff. I, I couldn't really kind of grasp the, um, the reason for doing it, but, uh, I, I, but it's very, very important. And uh, this idea of um, pre-multiply, or uh, multiplying both sides by the inverse of the matrix, that's what I did here in step two. I multiplied on the left-hand side here, I multiplied the inverse of one, two, one minus three to just to get a i, and then i by x, y is this, but this is the, this is the way that you, you should do it. We start off here, and so therefore the, the, the column of unknowns, in this came x and y, is the inverse of the left-hand side, numbers, square matrix here, times seven minus eight. So what you need to do then is you need to find the inverse of one, two, one minus three, and then multiply it by seven minus eight. So here's step three. Now remember what you have to do. The first thing you do here, this is so this is three a. You have to get to the determinant first. Remember, get to the determinant first. And the determinant then of one minus three two one is it's one minus three minus one by two which in this case is minus five. And that's a good number, folks, because it's not zero. Remember, we talked about this. If the determinant is zero, there's no inverse, you walk away. So here, that's okay, that's good. Minus five is good. And so then, three B, so one, two, one, minus three, inverse then is one over minus five. It's one over the determinant times what do you do? You interchange these two numbers here because that's the recipe. So this is minus three and this is one and you change the sign of the other two. So it's minus two minus one. Now, in this game, usually you leave the one over the determined outside the square matrix because it just makes things a little bit easier. But in this case, I can't, you see, I got loads of minuses here and I got a minus here. We don't like minuses in mathematics. We much prefer much prefer pluses. So if I multiply in by minus one everywhere, I get one over five into three, two, one, minus one. But you can leave it like this as well if you want to. But in this case, this looks a little bit better and it makes calculations a little bit easier. So why not do it? So I just multiplied each, um, uh, I just brought the minus one essentially into each of the terms here. And when I multiply minus by minus, I get plus. And except here, I've got one by minus one and I get minus one. So that's, that's what you do here. And finally then, folks, here's what you do. X, Y, you now write down the inverse, which is one over five, three, two, one minus one, by the right-hand side, which in this case is seven minus eight. So you get one over five into. Now it's three by And here you get one by seven, which is seven, and uh, minus one by minus eight, which is plus eight. So therefore, finally, then you get x y is equal to one over five into uh, twenty one minus sixteen over fifteen, and so you get one over five into twenty one minus sixteen is five, and you get fifteen here. And so when you multiply in by five, one over five, I get one and three. So finally, folks, X is equal to one and Y is equal to three. Huh. Okay. Now, 
you're probably, you know, so we got, basically we got the same answer. We have to get the same answer. And you're probably saying to yourself, what is the point of doing this? Because it's much more complicated. Look at this, look at this nonsense here. Look at what we did. It took me three pages to get this. Um, but there is value in doing this because it's, it's relatively straightforward to program this up. And you can get a computer to do this for you, very, very straightforward, because there's a system here. There's a, there's a, there's a recipe that you follow. It's a, not an obvious recipe, and it looks a lot more complicated, but I want you to get happy doing this. Okay, I want you to be able to do this. So there's a few exercises um, on 8.6, on page, uh, exercises 8.9, and particularly exercises 1. Get doing those exercises. All right, it's very important that you do because you need to practice this. It looks straightforward enough, but everything is straightforward, guys, until you actually have to do it. And then, you know, it looks forward to it. And when you, you can see me doing it, and it's wonderful, and I'm, I'm really super at doing this. <laughs> yeah, but you need to be able to do this as well. You need to practice this. I know it's very difficult at home. You're on your own, and you're shouting at your siblings. And you're shouting at your parents, which you shouldn't because your parents are doing their best. Maybe your siblings aren't. Um, but uh, you need to just start putting the time in here and doing this stuff because you will see this over and over again. Okay? So um, let me just do one of you. One for you. Let me just, just let's, let's, let's look at one. And I'm going to do one, another example for you, and then we're going to stop and you can do this on your own. Here's the last page. I'm going to start this. So this is... Um, Exercise is 8.9. It's question one and it's A. All right. So here's the simultaneous equations. I'm going to um, 4x minus 2y is equal to 14. And you've got 2x plus y is equal to 5. Okay, so that's the that's the, the the simultaneous equations. So you're going to use matrices to solve these. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to write this in matrix form. So it's four minus two, two one, x y is equal to fourteen five. Okay, so that step two then is. <clears throat> x, y is equal to 4 minus 2, 2, 1, inverse 14, 5. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the inverse of this. So the first thing I do is I get the determinant of this matrix here, folks. So it's, four, it's 1 over 4 by 1 minus minus four be careful with the minus signs okay and then what you do here then is you interchange the four and the one because that's the recipe and you change the signs here so this is two and this becomes minus two so what you get then this is one over four plus so four minus minus four so it's one over eight into one two minus two four and so then finally then folks x, y is equal to 1 over 8 into 1, 2, minus 2, and 4 times 14, 5. So you must multiply this out. This is a 2 by 2 matrix by a column matrix. So you're going to get 1 over 8 into 14 plus 10, which is 24. So I think you get x equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 1, and that's your answer. Okay? Do the other ones yourselves, and um, I'll talk to you again during the week. Okay? Stay safe. Don't go out. Don't socialize. Um, although, as engineers, that's, not, <laughs> that's never a big uh, ask, really, is it? <laughs> don't socialize. Bunch of engineers. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, but don't, seriously, stay safe and uh, stay fit. Do this stuff though, all right? Take time to do this. All right, 
I'll talk to you during the week, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.